Jason Don Huckle here. I'm making this video from request from our servo programming videos um, to show some of the stuff that goes inside the plane that's available from JR. We actually have what I would call a Grupo set uh, for my cycling buddies. It's kind of like XTR. Everything is built to work together. You don't have to piecemeal anything. It really, really is awesome. The um, the first item that we're going to, I'm just basically going to ramble about each item and then you'll see how it works together. I'm running 8912 servos, which are 12 volt brushless X bus servos. Um, the video of the programming, I go into a little more detail about how these are, how these are different than your regular servos. But right now I just want to show you the build quality. If you just look, you can see they use socket head cap screws to hold the cases together, which that's just unheard of in the in the model airplane world at this point. It comes with a socket head cap screw to hold your servo arm, so you don't have to go chase one of those down. Everything's hard anodized. The whole case is aluminum. After they anodize it, they mill the heat sinks out to make the servo lighter, and it looks a little cooler. And then something else that they, the small details, they made this servo a one millimeter narrower than all the other super high torque servos on the market. So it just drops right into the arfs. I have an extreme flight laser. You don't, you don't have to do anything. You just drop them in. They fit right in the tray, which is, you know, they're actually looking at the things that matter to make your life easier. Make this as easy as to use as possible that comes with the grommets. It doesn't come with those cheap plastic arms because it's, I mean, these have enough power it could snap that in half in a matter of seconds. But you can get the, oh, sorry about that, JR servo arms, which are made by JR for that servo. Double lock design. It's got a uh, clamping screw, which you can see in there. And then you have the screw that goes in the center pre-drilled and tapped holes for the control linkage. These come in variable lengths and they even have an offset one for pull pull. Um, after they anodize them they machine the edges down, they chamfer it to make it nice and shiny. It's in the detail. That's uh, that's really cool. It looks awesome when you put it all together. That's stuff that makes you feel warm and fuzzy that they actually care about the quality. This is an item that's been around forever, but I'm really excited about it because I haven't got to use one. But it's a ignition optical kill switch. These are uh, uh, the difference between this and some of the bazillion other ones out there is these work. They work in a way that one has got a case around the. It's not just a circuit board bouncing around inside your airplane. They actually put a nice case on it. It goes up to 12.6 volts. It has two ignition outputs, so if you're running a twin cylinder, not a twin, I'm sorry, a twin ignition, like a DA200, you can run both ignitions with their own power line. It has a RPM sensor where you can see it on your radio, and then it has, all of them have this, but there's an LED to tell you that it's on. You can run a separate battery if you want to, or you can run it off the receiver. And then the thing that's really cool is it's got a double actuation switch. So if you want to make it double on a safety level, you can make it to where you got to hit the kill switch twice before it turns off. So you got to cycle it on, off, on, off in order to get it to go, you know, to kill your motor, which is phenomenal because I have seen some of my friends do that accidentally and it, it doesn't usually end well. Um, so that that's just at once it's all the small stuff these are uh, very light too I don't know I should have weighed it but it's it's not very heavy which is really you know it's a way better than the weight of a battery and then the last item the brains of the matter it's the receiver this is a power bus style system that they have this is an 11 channel they have a 16 channel too it has 11 p 
um, pulse width modulation outputs and three X bus. The 16 channel has more X bus. I don't know the exact number, but it has quite a few more X bus if you're into the X bus situation. Obviously, two battery inputs, so you got double redundancy there. With these connectors come on them, and then you have two RF in, which is essentially four receivers, because these receivers have two antennas on them. So each one of those is a separate receiver. It comes with uh, longer leads. This is the stock ones, and then you can got longer ones if you want to place them deeper into the airplane away from carbon fiber or whatnot. The mount, uh, rubber grommet mount. It's extremely robust design, nice and stiff, but doesn't weigh hardly anything. It's more than a regular receiver, but you're eliminating re regulators, you're eliminating um, power, you know, there's no switch needed. This is what turns it off and on. It's just this little bitty switch here, which a lot of people think that power runs through this. This does not have power going through it. It's just an on and off signal switch. If you look real close, there's not even a power line hooked up. It's The center pin is gone. All it's looking for is that when it makes connection, it will turn off. So if you unplug this, it just comes on. Or if a wire breaks or the switch fails, it just comes on. So you never ever have to worry about the switch failing again, which is an awesome little feature. That pretty much covers the the base of the stuff that goes in the airplane. Um, I don't really know if you have any more questions or not. If you do, leave comments below. You can contact me on my website, fortitude.rc.com. There's a contact button. I'll be more than happy to try to answer your questions that you have. And uh, we'll see you at the flying field soon.